Probably the most dangerous and challenging job in diving is working as a commercial diver. Commercial divers are involved in underwater construction, salvage, and other types of operations. Eric Wolchin is a commercial diver with Global Diving and Salvage in Seattle. Listen as Eric explains the reality of what it means to be a commercial diver. Hello, my name is Eric Wolchin. I'm a commercial diver. I work for Global Diving and Salvage here in Seattle, Washington. It's a very unique job and I absolutely love it. I went to commercial dive school at Santa Barbara City College, Santa Barbara, California. They had a wonderful program, it's the Marine Diving Technology Program. The instructors were absolutely excellent. The program itself was extremely rigorous. It was about a two year program where we learned how to do everything from diving physics to learning how to work underwater with tools, learning how to work with them safely and carry out the work we needed to do. The hiring process for becoming a commercial diver is actually pretty tough. My first job when I was working for Salty Dog Dive Service, I was just starting school, um, so I was hired pretty quickly. Just a real basic job, was given an air tank and a hose and a pad and said, here you go, don't kill yourself. Um, I got a lot of experience doing that over a bunch of years, and then I decided to take it up to the next level. Global is definitely the next level. We're one of the biggest marine uh, salvage contractors on the West Coast, and we're trying to every day getting bigger and bigger. Uh, we work with massive equipment, massive loads, and uh, a whole lot more people than Salty Dog had. Salty Dog, we had about eight guys. Global, we have about 200. Um, it's a much different objective working with many, many people trying to do these huge scale projects, loads up to a couple thousand tons, massive equipment, all sorts of machinery. Um, Global is pretty tough to get onto. They don't hire people right out of school. I had been out of school about six months, and when I gave uh, my current boss a call, he told me they weren't hiring. They hadn't hired in about a year, and he really didn't need anybody. But he said he would give me a shot since I looked pretty good. I had a lot of experience underwater from working with Salty Dog. And um, I told him I wouldn't let him down, and I'm still working for him. With commercial diving, there's kind of a hierarchy of uh, progression of jobs. Usually you get hired as a tender, which is a bare bones job straight out of school where you pretty much tend the diver's hose and assist him with getting tools and helping him in and out of the water. That's usually as you're hired, right out of school. And then you move up to a diver tender, which means they kind of trust you a little bit. They give you a chance to dive. You really hope you don't screw it up because you probably won't dive again. And um, from there, you actually become a diver. The process does usually take about three years, sometimes a little longer, sometimes a little less. Really all depends on the kind of guy you are. Typical offshore work starts at about $300 a day, and usually that moves up with the more experience you get. This is actually pretty good money. Um, most offshore hitches are four, six, eight weeks long, so after eight weeks making 300 bucks a day, you got a pretty hefty paycheck. It's usually pretty nice to come back to the beach and have your bank account full. Most guys are pretty young, so having that kind of money is actually really cool. Um, up here in the Northwest, we, uh, we're all union divers, and union divers get paid quite a bit of money, but we also do quite a bit of hard work. Um, union rates here in Seattle are about 100 bucks an hour, which is really nice. And we also have four hour minimums. So we could do a dive for about 10 minutes, and we're still getting paid for four, four hours of diving, which is about 400 bucks. But on the other hand, we could actually be in the water for that entire four hours, and you're still making 400 bucks. Um, that's usually a pretty good day, because that's only half your day, only four hours. So you're still making some money. The other four or eight hours, which is typically, if you're just on the job site, probably about 35 or 40 bucks. Or maybe if you're standby, it's about 45 bucks. So you're looking at a pretty hefty paycheck for a day as a union diver. In the commercial diving world, there's quite a few skills that you need to have to be able to do your job effectively. Um, here in the Puget Sound region of the Northwest, uh, small boat handling and navigation is actually pretty key. Uh, most jobs we go to, we have to take small vessels too, and we have to know how to navigate. You need to know the rules of the road. You need to know all the navigation buoys different lights, different sounds, you need to know how to get to the job safely so you can make your money and go home at the end of the night. Um, stuff also like rigging. Rigging is very important. It doesn't matter what job you're on or where you are or what type of what type of job you're actually doing, rigging is always going to be important. Not just topside. Underwater you're going to have to do quite a bit of rigging also. You might have to rig stuff to be lifted out of the water, you might have to rig stuff to get things together to try to get your job complete. Um, topside rigging is usually pretty important to get something down to the diver. By underwater burning, it's, it's actually exactly what it sounds. You're, you're creating a fire underwater to burn through usually steel. Um, the process uses um, high voltage electricity mixed with oxygen and it's put through a torch in which you have a rod which consumes itself and it has a 10,000 degree flame at the tip 
and that'll pretty much cut through anything you need to cut through. As a commercial diver, I also work for a company called Sub Aviator Systems. Now, Sub Aviator Systems, we own a two-man submarine that looks just like a fighter jet. Now, this submarine has two individual pods for a pilot and a co-pilot in which they're breathing one atmosphere, air, which is just like up here on the surface. So the sub can go down to a thousand feet with its pilots and then come right back up to the surface and they don't have any need for decompression like in typical deep diving. A typical day in the life of a commercial diver is usually pretty long. Usually we're working uh, 12 hour shifts on big jobs which will be 12 hours on, 12 hours off. Um, and that's not the norm. Sometimes those 12 hour days can extend to 14, 16, maybe 20 hours. If we're trying to finish something, we're going to stay on shift until we're done. Uh, typically they try to keep us to 12 hours just for a safety factor. Um, keep us less tired and more alert. Um, here in the Pacific Northwest, if we get called out on a job and it's only going to take four hours, stuff you know sometimes doesn't take what it's estimated to take and we could be there for 30 hours. There's no saying, oh hey, it's 8 o'clock at night, I'm going to go home. It doesn't work like that. We stay until the job's done and then we go home. Um, also, it could be 3 o'clock in the morning and you get called out to a job and you need to go at 3 o'clock in the morning. It's not, oh, hey, you know, I'll, I'll be in at 7 and we'll go then. It's, no, you go in at 3 o'clock in the morning and you start working. And it's not necessarily at 5 o'clock, oh, hey, it's 5 o'clock, I'm going home. You might be there till 8, 10, 12 o'clock at night until you go home. Being a commercial diver, you typically get to spend a lot of time with your crew. Um, this time is usually about 12 hours a day for 7 days a week for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. Um, it's pretty tough. You know, you get to know each other really, really well. Some guys you get along with, some guys you don't. Uh, the guys you don't get along with, you have to learn to get along with them uh, so you can do your job effectively. Everyone has to look out for each other on the job site since they're usually pretty dangerous. And um, if you don't get along with a guy, you know, sometimes you have to, so you might save his life one day. Um, it's pretty tough when you've been out there for about six or eight weeks. It's some little things that really start bothering you about people. Um, you never knew that you actually get annoyed by the way somebody chews their cereal every morning. Working in the diving industry is extremely dangerous. Um, every day there's the possibility of being very severely injured or even killed. Um, every year we have many divers around the world that are killed doing what we do every day. It's pretty scary to think about. Uh, you go to work one day and something that you do every day kills you and you don't come home to your family. As a commercial diver, I can honestly say I could not see myself doing anything else for a career but diving. Um, I look at a lot of my friends that work in offices or in cubicles. Uh, they work nine to five jobs, they have to wear a suit. And I see that as pretty miserable. Um, I could never see myself doing something like that. Being a commercial diver is pretty much the only thing I could see myself doing in life, and I absolutely love it.